Welcome back to the road show this morning in the buzz. Oh, yeah. It's a battle that every engaged couple <laughs> pretty much ends up having. And here it is. Who the heck do we invite to our wedding? It can get ugly. Exes? Yes. Yes. Exes? So, off limits. <laughs> yeah, off limits. <laughs> So, actually, I don't think some were off limits of mine, but back to that in a minute. <laughs> mine either. Some people like small ceremonies, others like extravagant parties, and of course, you really always have to consider the budget that's involved. So we wanted to find out how you decide who gets an invite. Take a look. I think it all depends on your expenses. So the lower the cost, the more people you couldn't invite. Obviously, if you're looking for a extravagant wedding and you're willing to pay, you know, thousand bucks a head, well, not quite that, but something more elaborate, then you have to cut it down a little. But it all depends on you and who you want to bring. People that are closest to you, the smaller the better. Okay. What do you think? I like the bigger. <laughs> yeah, so you think everyone should be invited? Sure. <laughs> yep. Families, friends. Who Family, is? friends, everyone that's close and you know. I think it depends on the setting. If you're outside and you're on a beach, you can invite all the people you want because they're outside on a beach. If you want to do a little wedding intimate, you want to remember everybody that's there, that's the other choice. Who do we invite and who do we not invite? That was a difficult battle. <laughs> it was very hard for us to decide. Um, immediate family, family, and we had to cut a few friends out, but other than that, mostly family. All right, so we're going to talk about what we think is a good-sized wedding. But I have to tell you, I've been to a lot of weddings. You probably have, too. I mean, there was a time where it was like, you know, eight weddings a summer. Right. It felt like every other weekend. But I think the happiest people have been those who just invited the people closest to them. They didn't make it some big, you know, 350-plus, we're just going to invite everybody on our A list, B list, C list, and D list, you know? Think, keep it to the A and B list. That would be my advice anyway. Yeah. But. I've looked back at, at our video and our yeah. some of the pictures from our wedding, and honestly, it was 10 years ago, yeah. and, I, and I look at it, I'm like, how the heck did that person get invited? I know. You don't even talk to them anymore. Like, you literally, mm -hmm. you were friends with them at the time, yep. and you didn't you invited them because you felt like you needed to invite them. And then, honestly, there's probably, if, I think we had 125 people at our wedding. Mm -hmm. That's a good sign. You take yeah. half for family and close friends, but those other half... They're like fringy. Who do I talk? I don't even I talk to some mm -hmm. of them anymore. It's very, it's, it's, it's and interesting. And I, I feel like a lot of times, too, if... You get stuck in that, well, if I invite this one, I got to invite that sure. one, and then I have to invite this one, and so on and so forth. And then all of a sudden, you're up to 300 people, and you're like, I don't even know half these people. I don't even talk to any of them. I know. And even when it comes to relatives, I love my family, close to my family, love my relatives. But then once you start getting into third Distant cousins, cousins and, yeah. and, and eighth grandfather, I don't know what you want to You know, then there's <laughs> no, you know what I mean? Because you get those people that are like, well, why aren't you inviting aunt so-and-so right like now? I didn't even know I was related to them. Yeah. So no, why? It's yeah. all about, and you don't want to make it a selfish day, but it really is, a, it is your day. Sure. And you don't yeah. want to feel the pressure from, let's say, mom or dad to go, well, you really got to invite this person. Mm -hmm. And maybe you don't want to. And then there's right. going to be all this drama. Just, ugh. I think people just need to remember that at the heart of it, it's just about the bride and the mm -hmm. groom. And it's their day. And there were, there's, there's been times where, I, where I've had friends, college friends, or whatever, where I didn't get invited to their wedding. Yeah. And I was a little bummed out about it. And, yeah. And, but some people now, do. Oh, some people get yeah, it gets, bitter. It gets, mm -hmm. But now it's funny because as you get older, you, you have friends and people that get married, and you're like, I hope they don't invite me. I know. And you're like, oh, oh, it costs this much or, for a sitter, this much for the gift. Yeah. You're like, oh, Or when you do one. get invited, then you have that whole, they're single. Do I do a plus one? Yeah. Right. Do I do a plus one for everyone? Because no. now that's double the amount of people, nope. double the budget. No? You, you don't like do a plus one uh, for everyone. You like a lot of drag, like just people no, flying solo? No, but listen, though, if somebody is dating someone, that's different. Mm -hmm. But I, don't, I, I am a firm believer in why should I be paying for all these extra people that I don't even know? And let's face it, sometimes a plus one can end up dangerous. You know, you, you, you just, don't know you who that date one is. And they bring some <laughs> random guy who's like, you know, whacking him back at the bar. It can mm -hmm. be ugly plus one. We have a, we had a so. we had a, fl a solo flyer that ended up with another solo flyer yeah. at ours and it got dangerous. The wedding video of these two dancing, oh my goodness. Scandalous. Scandalous. I think I saw that. They were sweating. They were I'll stop right there. Okay. Yeah. It was pretty scandalous. I think we need to cut you off right there. I think it's basically plus debatable. Plus ones can actually prevent scandal sometimes, though. Yeah, plus ones can be bad, though. I don't know what Courtney know. thinks about the plus one. You just got married. How many plus ones do you have at your wedding, Courtney? <laughs> not, not too many. I'd say maybe 10 or less. How many eighth grandfathers did you have? <laughs> 
<laughs> um, seven. I'm kidding. Yeah. No, I think I think there was like two or four or something like that. It, it's tough. And when you come from like a divided family like me, it's like I have four families now. So it is a lot of people and a lot of decisions. And our live bloggers and Facebook friends, it's generated a lot of comments this morning about what they went through or what they hope to do when they do go through uh, tying the knot. So Joe says, I think the toughest part about the guest list is deciding how many guests will attend the wedding and then who will be disappointed for not getting an invite. And Colleen says, we had immediate family only at my daughter's wedding and ended up with a few angry people, but you do what you can afford, she said. Here's the poll right underneath the live blog. What's the toughest part about a wedding guest list? A, deciding who gets a plus one. B, who to invite from the workplace. C, where to cut lists from family friends. Or D, deciding on the number of guests. I can't count how many comments we have on our Facebook pages, probably upwards of 20. And Bill says the toughest part is invite people you love. He says, and everyone else can stay home. And Andrew, um, Adam Blessing says, having to invite family you never see or work people who you don't really want to is difficult. And Patricia said, making sure all family and guests get along with the seating. She said, I have seen some terrible table sitting. So that, that is a tough one for sure. That takes multiple times. But uh, we'll see what you guys all think about the guest list in about a half hour for now.